The session will be uh, by Nina Holden, Robin Pemantle, and Jivel Perez. The subject is subpolynomial trace reconstruction for random strings and arbitrary deletion probability. And Nina will be giving the talk. Uh, okay, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I will talk about uh, a new upper bound uh, for the trace reconstruction problem. Uh, and as mentioned, it's a joint work with uh, Robin Pimantel and uh, Yuval Paris. Uh, so we consider Alice and Bob, uh, and Alice has uh, a bit string of length n, uh, which she wants to send to Bob. Uh, and when she's sending it to Bob, uh, each bit is deleted independently uh, with some probability q. Uh, so on the figure, uh, the red bits represent the deleted bits, while the black bits represent uh, the transmitted bits. Uh, Bob doesn't know the position of uh, the bits which were deleted. Uh, so the only thing he sees is a contracted string uh, consisting of, uh, of the not uh, deleted bits. So in this case, it's equal to 1, 0, 1, and 0. Uh, and uh, Alice and Bob uh, repeats this multiple times. Uh, so here you can see that Alice has sent, um, has sent her string uh, through the deletion channel a second time. So Bob gets uh, a second string y2. And we denote these output strings, uh, and we denote these output strings by uh, by traces. Um, and here they have uh, done this a third time, uh, and so on. Um, and then Bob wants to reconstruct uh, the original uh, string X. And uh, and the question we want to answer is how many uh, traces does Bob need uh, in order to reconstruct uh, the string X? Um, so, uh, so the previous known upper bounds uh, are shown in red on the slide. Uh, so Paris and Anzai uh, proved that when the deletion probability Q uh, is less than a half, then it's possible to reconstruct X with e to the power root log n uh, traces. Um, and uh, b before our work, uh, for, for deletion probability Q bigger than a half, uh, then uh, the, uh, then uh, the number of traces for the random uh, problem. Uh, so the upper band was the same as for uh, worst case strings. Um, and um, uh, and um, uh, and, the, uh, and the best known lower bound uh, before our work uh, is shown in green, uh, and that was um, log n squared. Uh, so I can also mention that uh, that this question can be asked in two variants. Uh, so it's possible to ask uh, ask for uh, the case of uh, x a worst case string, and for the case of x some uh, typical string. And uh, in our work, uh, we consider the latter case, uh, and we assume that the bits of, of x are chosen uh, iid. Um, so so our main result uh, is improving uh, the previous results in in three ways. Uh, so first of all, uh, our result holds for uh, all deletion probabilities Q between 0 and 1. Uh, and second, uh, our upper bound uh, is e to the power uh, cube root log n uh, as compared to uh, e to the power um, root uh, log n, uh, which, which was obtained previously for uh, deletion probabilities less than a half. Uh, and third, uh, our result uh, doesn't only hold for the deletion channel, uh, but it also holds for a generalized version where we allow insertions and substitutions. Uh, so insertions mean that before each bit of the original um, string, uh, in, uh, between it, each bit and the original string, we insert uh, an independent, um, a geometric number of, of independent bits. Uh, so as you can see um, on the figure, we first uh, insert uh, bits at, at random, uh, which are shown in green. Uh, and afterwards, um, we delete each bit in, in the longer string uh, independently at random in order to get the final trace y. Uh, so one, um, so there's one interesting remark uh, to make about uh, the upper bound we obtain, and that is that uh, this is the best possible um, upper bound we can get uh, without also improving uh, imp improving the upper bound for worst case strings. Uh, so the case of uh, worst case strings and random strings are are closely related, and the reason these two problems are closely related uh, is that if we have some arbitrary string of length uh, log n, and we have a random string of of length n then it will typically be the case that this, um, that this arbitrary string is a substring of, of the random string. So it means that if we know how to reconstruct random strings of, of, of um, length n, then we can also reconstruct uh, worst case strings, since a worst case strings will typically be a substring of, of the random string. 
Um, so our, uh, our method is based on uh, reconstructing the bits of x uh, one by one. Uh, so we imagine that we are at the point in time uh, where we have uh, reconstructed uh, the part of the string shown in green and uh, the part of the string shown in grey uh, consists of unknown bits. Uh, so the first uh, step of our algorithm is to um, find the approximate location in the trace uh, which corresponds to this uh, last, uh, last bit of the input string, uh, which, which we know. Uh, and we find some estimate in, uh, in the trace, uh, which, we, which we denote by tau. Uh, so after we have done uh, this alignment step, uh, we use bit statistics to identify uh, the next bit. Um, so, if, uh, so more precisely, if we have two candidate strings, uh, x1 and x2 for x, uh, it's possible to find uh, some uh, index j uh, such that uh, bit uh, tau plus j uh, in the trace has a significantly different expectation um, for, uh, for the two input strings. Uh, so using this result, uh, we can distinguish between traces obtained from x1 and traces obtained from, uh, from x2, simply by counting how many times bit tau plus j uh, equals 1. Um, and if we, if we compare uh, this outline with, uh, with a case of small deletion probability, uh, q less than a half, um, it is uh, particularly the alignment step uh, which, uh, which needs to be modified in, uh, in the case of, of high deletion probability. So I will focus only on the alignment step uh, in the remainder of, uh, of the talk. Um, so uh, so when, when the deletion probability Q is less than a half, uh, alignment can be done by a greedy method, uh, which is simply uh, choosing, uh, the, choosing tau uh, to be the first uh, possible position it could be. Um, uh, but this greedy method has a phase transition uh, for Q equals a half, so it fundamentally fails, uh, it fails in our case. Uh, alignment for Q less than a half uh, can also be done by, f by looking, at, uh, looking at long uh, substrings which are, uh, of, uh, of which none, no bits are, are deleted in the trace. Um, but finding such, uh, such long ranges of, of preserved uh, bits uh, is simply too unlikely uh, in our case of high deletion probability. And, uh, and again, there is a transition exactly at uh, Q equals a half. Uh, so in our work, uh, we, we introduce uh, a completely new uh, alignment method. Uh, and the alignment method is based on a test, uh, and our test uh, takes two strings, w, til w tilde and w, as input, uh, and it says whether uh, w tilde is likely to, be, uh, is likely to have been uh, obtained uh, by sending w through uh, the deletion channel. Um, so what do we do? So, so first, we as we choose some, uh, we choose W to be some um, part of the input string X, uh, consisting of uh, of uh, reconstructed bits, but which is rather close uh, to, to the first uh, bit, which is unknown. Um, and then we uh, and then we apply the test multiple times with all possible um, strings W tilde uh, of uh, of appropriate length. Uh, and then we simply, when we do the alignment, we simply let the alignment position be, uh, be the position corresponding to the first time we get a positive test. Um, so, um, so, so, how is, so how is our test defined? Um, so our test takes as input these two strings W and W tilde. And it is defined by dividing these, uh, these strings into approximately log n blocks. And in each of these blocks, uh, there is a majority bit uh, equal to either uh, 0 or 1. So the bits uh, indicated on the figure is indicating the majority bit uh, in each block. Um, and then um, we look at a block number uh, j in w and block number j in w tilde, and we ask ourselves whether the majority bit is, is same or different. If the majority bit is the same, uh, that event is more likely if w tilde was obtained by sending w through the deletion channel. Uh, and our test uh, simply counts um, how often uh, the majority bit in, uh, in a certain block in W tilde is the same as the majority bit in the corresponding, blo in corresponding block in W. So in the example shown, you see that we have such agreement in, uh, in four out of uh, six cases. And then if, if the number of agreements is sufficiently high, the test is positive, uh, other otherwise it's, uh, it's negative. Uh, this gives us alignment with error log n. Uh, and we, uh, by doing a refined second alignment step, we can get it down to Kubert uh, log n. Uh, that's it. Thanks.
Any questions? Uh, so we haven't uh, we haven't actually calculated that in detail in the current papers. We have we haven't addressed that. Um, I believe uh, that it should be uh, at, at a worst polynomial. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's also something we don't we don't address. So, so it should be monotone in Q, uh, but we don't we don't uh, look exactly at how it blows up when uh, uh, when Q goes to one. Yeah. But, uh, in once you have insertions, doesn't that doesn't that no longer work? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's actually so it's also the case that um, uh, so this bound, which is using the greedy method, uh, then uh, then insertions are not allowed. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, so, so I was splitting into two parts: the alignment step and uh, and this bit statistic step. And in the bit statistic step, is based on complex analysis techniques. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's thank the speaker again.